really excited. I thank the Lord for so many things of this church because, yes, me and my wife go way back. In fact, we're from the other church, and now we have our own. Thank you, Jesus. But I want to thank you, Pastor Ed, because many times me and Pastor Ed in the past have always come together and and just praise God and talk about God. And plus speak she's got to. And and, and 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 always it's always wonderful to have your brother in Christ with you. Yes, amen. Because we always spoke about the joy of the Lord mm -hmm. and how we can improve our lives. But it's always important, not only how to prove, improve your life, but it's how we live our life in Christ. Remember the word of God says, if we live in the spirit, then we walk Walking in the spirit. spirit. Yeah. Walking in the spirit is doing that which is of the word of God, 24 seven. And I thank my brother, Pastor Ed for these things because he did teach me a lot. So did Pastor Bonnie. Scoldings, of course. <laughs> and I thank mostly that we seek for this year is the vision that has been given to those who God trusts in his word. Yeah. And that vision is revival. Yeah. Yes, come on. Come on. Come revival. On. <sighs> revival means that I have not been walking with God. He sends someone to tell you that where you are is not where you're supposed to be. The true, re me the true meaning of revival is that you've gone astray. You don't talk to me anymore, God says. I haven't seen you on your knees lately. Your thoughts are not my thoughts, nor your ways are my ways. Where are you? What have you done with yourself? I can't see you. You've gone astray. You've gone back into the world. I took you out of the world when you came to me. I set you free from the world. Now you've gone back. God is gracious in mercy, loving kindness. But if his grace can run out. This is why we have a revival. In fact, the revival is every Sunday. That's why we're here. Because every day we may fall, trip, stumble, or go astray. We've got to be here every Sunday to build it back up. Too many of us here think that we know about God. But when you walk out that door, when you turn on that radio, what are you listening to? I'm sure it's not praise and worship. The revival doesn't stop here. It's going forward with it. In my heart, soul, mind, and body. Because there is the revival. In me. By the word. Let us stand for the message. I'm going to give you. Jeremiah 30. The word. Thirty seventeen. please rise for this message that you're going to receive by the word of God. Jeremiah 30, 17, For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds. Saith the Lord, because they called thee out an outcast, saying that this is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. 
This is talking about his word and Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, we thank you for this word, Father God. Lord, let your word speak through me. Not me, Father God, but your word, Father God. Let your spirit dwell in this place. Let it bring reproof and correction, Father God. Let us be in humility, Father God, also. But Lord, it is your love that speaks. And we thank you for these things. And all the saints said, Amen. What can we say about revival? Like I said, our vision for... Oh, you may be seated. Our vision in 2020 is revival. Now, we've heard a lot about revivals in the past. I think one of the most famous in uh, uh, what happened in uh, L.A., Los Angeles in 1903 to 1915. I believe it lasted eight years. The Azusa Street Ministry were over one dozen of the greatest people, prophets, and apostles at that time. Smith Wigglesworth, mm -hmm. Howard Carter, uh, um, uh, um, a couple of women went there. May I have their names, anybody? Bonnie Bray. Excuse me? Bonnie Bray. Bonnie Bray, uh, uh, Seymour, uh, and there were some added to as, as the years went by. But that was just a part of it because at that same time, would you believe it, that in Wales, there was another revival going on. That revival took the, uh, the Europe country by storm, that one too, just as much as this one. But yet it's the meaning of a revival. It's the depth of the revival that I'm here to speak to you about. John 14, 6 says, Christ came to give us the way, truth, and life, like Pastor Ed said earlier. But not only the lost to the lost, but those who have been led astray, those who know the Lord, but have left the Lord, who are weak, brokenhearted, those in need of a change of life, those who are on their last leg. Those who have nothing to look forward to. But it's also forgetting the word of God that you've known about for a long time. That's why it's important for us to be in church every Sunday. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Our own state is suffering. Yes, even our country. <coughs> the enemy Satan has twisted, deceived, and manipulated God's word and whose people have gone to and fro. That means their imaginations. They're doing what they feel is right. In other words, it's their righteousness that they feel that is okay to do. That's what's happening right now. If we don't understand the word of God, then we do as we please, or should I say, our righteousness, which is not the righteousness of God. Remember he says, your ways are not my ways. So, a revival can take us out from where we are to where we should be. Preaching has become spiritual words just so, uh, uh, I'm sorry, spiritual pre preaching, thank you. Preaching has become Spectacle, a, a spectacle of words just so they can fill the seats in the churches. In fact, some churches have become just motiv motivational speakers. I've been in those churches. They're dead churches. If you can't preach the true gospel, don't get up there. But yet, I've been in many churches and I've walked out of them too. I don't know how many. I'm telling you the truth. Many, many, many churches. I've called my wife and told her, this church is dead. I don't know what that pastor's preaching up there, but he's not preaching the word of God. And this is what we need today in America. But it should only be preached under one condition. Up here is the anointing to the anointed and those who are lost. When you're up here preaching, it better be the revival of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because that's what it is. 
<clears throat> Jesus came to have the revival because remember for 430 years God did nothing. From Malachi to Matthew, 430 years God never spoke to no one. He never did miracles, signs, and wonders. He sent his son. That is the greatest revival in the word of God. Jesus Christ coming from heaven and sacrificing himself to give us the way, the truth, and the life. Less than 10% of the true gospel is preached in the church. Many Christians don't want to hear the truth. That's what's so sad. Romans gives us the truth of how the people live at that time. You know, uh, Romans, uh, uh, let's go to Romans uh, 1, 23. Romans 1. Let's start with 21 first. Because that, they knew God. They glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, yet they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like an corruptible man and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creepy things. That means they worship other gods, idols. Remember, God says, speak to your idols. They cannot talk to you. I can. But yet, they fell away. They changed the truth into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator. Revival is so important to bring them out of that. Because once you don't know how to come back to it and you stay in it, your destination is hell. Remember, God is giving you a measure of grace. It can run out. This is exactly what's happening today. If we go to Romans 3, Let's go to Romans 3, 12. To 18. And they were all gone out of the way. They were all together become unprofitable. There is none that doth good. No, not one. Their throat is an open sepulcher. With their tongues they have used deceit. The poison of asp. Is under the list. And the asp was a snake, a very poisonous snake. In fact, who got bit by the asp? Brother Paul. Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways, and the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. It's so sad to, to know that someone that was in God at one time and you hear them backsliding. That's one of the names that God gave his people. He gave them many names in the Old Testament. In fact, one of them was a rebellious, stiff neck, transgressed, but it's the worst one of all. It's the number one sin of all disobedient people. When you disobey God, you give sin a definition. Lust, fornication, adultery, stealing, lying. I think, uh, uh, I believe uh, uh, Galatians 5, 17 to 21 gives a perfect example. The viciousness. Like I said earlier, it's what you think is right. Not knowing the truth takes you places that you cannot control. Hanging out with the wrong friends. 
They say if you hang around a thief, you're going to eventually end up being a thief. If you hang around a liar, you're going to end up, end up lying. Just because you sleep in the garage doesn't mean you're a car either. <laughs> every true man of God that is anointed should preach a revival every Sunday. Like I said, that's why we're here every Sunday. Too many of our people stay. Uh, uh, people stray. They trip, stumble, and fall. No, uh, no mention of how God has done anything in their lives lately. Because they're not interested in it. Uh, why do you have a beer in your hand every night? I've got a Bible in my hand. That's what you should be telling them. I'm not afraid to tell you that at my work. Because they know about it. Because I've been asked, hey Jeff, how about a beer tonight? No, I've got studying to do. I'm not afraid to tell you that I praise and worship my God who has taken me from where you're at to now where I'm at. So my revival is taking what I know in me out there to the world, letting them know that I changed because I love my God and my Savior. And I have a future. I had a past, but I have a future. Those who are living in the past have no future. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, they do. But we won't talk about that future because it's not our future. Their future is different from ours. Ours is love and life. Righteousness. Because it is the kingdom of righteousness. God gave the people names that even today still exist. It hurts to see that how much can I do and yet how much they will be obedient. I can only do so much but it's how much you do with it what God gives you. Only one way we can come to God and it's on our knees. Forgiveness is the first healing when you come to Christ. It's not the first gift. It's the first healing. It's the first gift is the Holy Spirit. So as we come to Christ <coughs> in a revival, we come to Him only one way, with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Take it from the book of Mark. Because that's where the love of the revival starts. A revival of me coming back to Christ where I left, or when I didn't know Christ, either way it works, because I was a backslider. Now I'm coming back to Christ. It works both ways. But it's the iniquity that we have to look at too. The word iniquity means knowing that it's sin and still keep doing it. I mean, if you know it's wrong, you still keep doing it. It's called the lifestyle of sin. This is why God says that you have been given a measure of grace. That grace can run out. It's not that you, that he takes, <coughs> Excuse me. it's not that he takes it from you, it's that you walk away from it. God never takes anything from you. You lose it. Don't ever think that God's grace is sufficient for you when you in sin. I cannot do that. If I know I'm in sin, how do I come to Christ? The revival takes me to my knees and asks Lord to forgive me and cleanse me. That's the only way I can come to Christ, is cleansing. Christ said in himself, the words that I speak to you, they are cleansed. They are clean. Having Christ in me, through his word, cleanses me of the world that I'm living in. Christ said it in uh, uh, chapter 17, John, though we are in the world, we are not of the world. This is so important because revival takes us out of the world into the kingdom. We must never look at where we are now with ourselves. We must look at where we are in Christ. In Christ means I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If I'm not in strength, 
in, 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 in Christ, then I cannot walk away from sin. Only through obedience can I walk away from sin. Because I know about it. If you're not taught about sin, then you can't walk away from it. It's important for us to know what the meaning of sin is. And that's anything that is not of the word of God. Plain and simple. How long must we wait and act on the revival? I said every Sunday, but I'm going to say something else. It's every morning. Every morning you get up, you pray for your revival. You pray for strength, grace, mercy, love. You pray for God to help you. That's what a revival is about too, helping you. Lord, I can't do this on my own. I need your strength. All this comes to another word of revival. I'm a mechanic by trade, so I can take an engine out of Pastor Ed's truck or car. Oh, it's knocking. I'll rebuild it. That's called what? Restoration. I can take this chair that's got a ripped seat in it, and the back they want big book inside. Give it to Brother So and So. When he's done, oh, that bugger looks brand new. He restored it. Now I'm going to talk about another type of restoration. Spiritual restoration. That's the key to revival. Spiritual restoration. Because we fight not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual principalities of darkness. Giving the word of Christ in faith that every creature will know. Romans 10, 17, and 18. God has pleaded with his people all day long. This is how we know that we must have a revival. Because when God pleads with his people, that's telling me one thing. You're not with me. Where are you? You have not been on your knees. I haven't heard any prayers lately. And your walk is not a walk of my righteousness. I cannot have you Go where you're not sent. The word of God guides us every day. A revival is a place where we can come to God and say, Lord, I want to change. I need the change. I have to have this change. They have wandered too long. Let the anointing go forth to the people so they may know that the living God is still the God of his people. The revival takes us out and brings us in. Revival is only under obedience. And it's so sad that if I revival and preach the word of God to a thousand people. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoso. That's the key word. Whoso. Believers in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Who among those 1,000 people will come to Christ? Is it 10%? 100%? Who is going to be obedient to the word of God? The revival is so heavy, a burden on many. A revival is to free us from bondages. And it's so sad that many of us still keep bondages with us. There at the cross is where we leave it. 
me and Pastor Ed were talking the other night. And I said, Pastor Ed, it's what we bring to the cross. But it's also what we take away from the cross. What do we take back? How will you speak? How about taking back cussing? How about drinking? Smoking? Drugs? Womanizing? Fornication? Adultery? I'm supposed to leave it here, not take it back with me. God can't work through me. Only if I leave it here. The revival doesn't stop here. It goes from here to out there. When I get home and I see something in my house that's not worked right for God, I'll chuck it out the door. Throw it out the door. That picture of a rock and roll band. Get that. It's nothing to do with God. Put that picture up there and just says, in my house we will serve the Lord. Like I said, when I get out of this church and you jump in your car and you listen to that rock and roll, and how about that reggae stuff and all that? No, 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 I don't think so. Turn the channel. There's Caleb. There's Caleb out there. There's singing praise and worship out there. The revival is a 24-7 in Christ. Yes, come on, preach How am I supposed to do the things of God when I don't even, when I didn't leave it here? I took it with me. I can't preach the gospel if I'm out there doing something I'm not supposed to be. I can guarantee somebody's going to be the crowd. Hey, that guy that was at the store drinking with his friends the other night. Truth be told, a revival is in me by the word of God yes. and only by the anointing. Yes. Never, be an, never be afraid to say that you're a Christian, but you must live it. We must bring them back to Christ. Hallelujah. Show them his love, grace, mercy, everlasting love. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. These are the things of God that we need to focus on. A revival in Old Testament times in Isaiah, Isaiah 63. The Lord, he led uh, Israel out of uh, tribulation. Jeremiah 4, restored to God, they returned to God. Ezekiel 11, God prepares for the restoration. Ezekiel 11, 18 to 20. Those things of restoration, of revival in Christ. Many of us don't understand, but we have to, because the depth of God's word takes us to the height of his kingdom. A sinner, a revival brings a sinner out from that. And Luke 10, 5, I mean, uh, 15, 7 says, joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repentance. If I go out there and preach and only one man comes to God, the heavens rejoice. I've accomplished my mission. Because he set the example. And I can promise you others will be around him. Hmm, what's he got? I want some too. Forgiveness. I spoke about that earlier. Because God says he will blot out your iniquities and transgressions. Isaiah 45, 25, uh, 43, 25. But it's the Savior. The depth of revival is the Savior, Jesus Christ. Even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Isaiah 43, 11. Praise. Time of praise. You know that the last five chapters in Psalms, what is the Praise. first verse? Praise. Praise ye the Lord. The last five chapters in Psalms, 46 to 50. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Revival. What are we feeding the people? We're feeding them the word. Ah, Christ says, 
I am the bread of life, which is the word. I'm the bread of life. The word is that bread, the living word. John 6, 48 and 51 and 33, the bread of God. It makes the impossible possible. Luke 18, 27. The things which are impossible with man are possible with God. I think one of the greatest stories in the New Testament, we all know about the prodigal son. <clears throat> when he came back, the father had the revival. Yes. Hallelujah. Bust out that fatty cap. Here's that thing going out there. Let's, let's get him. Let's have a party. My son came back. He was once lost. Now he is found. He came back to the Lord. He came back to what he experienced. He didn't find it comfortable. Uh, uh, I studied under Lester Sumrall for five, going on six years. And he, he I had to uh, show it to my wife. He said one of the greatest things I've ever heard a pastor say. In fact, he was an apostle. Some of the worst backsliders make the best Christians. That's right. They, they never jump it. They know both sides. There was only one side. One way. Revival is about the light taking the people out of the darkness. Uh, you know what? You know what? I'm going to go into something here. The Lord just revealed it to me. You know when, um, I believe I know exactly what it's at, Jack. When Christ was being born, what was before he was being born? What was shown to them? The light. That was the, probably, okay. If you go to John, the Gospel of John, where it says, John 8. Now, there was a man sent from God whose name was John, and the same came witness, and bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. But he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light that was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh unto the world. That light is not only a light that takes us out of the darkness, but it's the light that takes us to the kingdom. <coughs> Did you know in heaven there is no shadow? That's right. There is no shadow of nothing. The trees cast no shadow. If I'm standing someplace in heaven, there is no shadow. Neither under the table and chairs. Neither the houses that he made for me. Remember, he says, I go prepare a place for you. You walk along the side of the house, uh, there's supposed to be a shadow around here. There is no shadow because it's the glory of the Lord that's there. It's the same glory that's here today in us. That revival brings the glory of the Lord to us, which can be in us. In fact, it must be in us. Christ gave us the living water. If any man thirst, let him come, come unto me and believe. The living water, his word is the living water. He shows us probably the greatest of all, and that's his love. I can have everything that God gives me, but if I don't have the true love, it's worthless. That revival is bringing the love of God to every man who is willing to have an ear to hear. Like I said, I'll go out there and preach to 1,000. How many, whoso, will hear the word of God? Let him, let him who hath an ear hear. That's the point. 
who is willing to hear. Yesterday when we were out there, thank you Pastor Bonnie and whoever's there at the stadium. I know some of you couldn't make it for other reasons, bless you for that. But I was saddened. Pastor Bonnie, how many of you think were there yesterday? The remnant. The remnant, thank you. Correct, the remnant. Don't mistake me what I said earlier. Yes, I know some couldn't make it. You are still part of the remnant because it was in your heart that you had. The Lord knew you, what you, why you couldn't be there. Don't mistake that. It was a day for the Lord, but yet I counted not even 600 people. That stadium fills 50,000. Oh, but I tell you what, if Bruno Mars were there, it'd be a sold out concert. But when God's there, I'm thankful that I'm a remnant of the Lord. Those who were there were blessed. I'm sorry, Pastor Ed. Tonight we won't have service. There's Bruno's Mars planes off. Probably won't have probably anybody here. Um, what did he say? There your heart will be also. Yeah. I wonder how many Christian songs he's going to sing. Hallelujah. Forgive me of that, Lord. Truth be told. But let's go a little bit deeper. A revival is to serve God. Take the message out there. Go tell it on the mountain. I'm blessed in the city and I'm blessed in the field. I'm going to take it to you. And I'm going to give it to you straight. That's how the word of God is. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. It's my way. No, not the highway. No, not the highway. It's my way. And only my way. That's the word of God. If we can't understand it, then there's nothing wrong with us having friendship in Christ. In fact, God calls us a friend when we, when we know him. I will call you my friend, he says. Having a friend in Jesus. Hallelujah. I said earlier that... Uh, Restoration goes so deep that restoration has to come within to work its way out. The restoration of the word of God penetrates the soul and marrow of the bone. What does it say about the sword of God? It cuts you coming down, but it hear you coming back up. Revival does that. It can convict you, but it's there to save you. Don't misunderstand the word of God. You need it. I'm not here to patronize you. I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm not here to beat around the bush either. I'll tell you what, that bush is still burning. I got some gray up here, but there's fire in the heart. Fire in the heart. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. We got a lot of gray out there, I see some. Yeah, we got a lot of gray, but I'll tell you what, there's fire in the furnace. Right? <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Revival is a resurrection. Because we need that too. John eleven twenty five. I am the resurrection, he and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Hallelujah. Revival is cleansing you. Jeremiah 33, 8. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to you. That's John 15, 3. But the cleansing is Jeremiah 33, 8. I'm going to go there real fast. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquities whereby they have sinned against me. And I will pardon all their iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. And it shall be to me a name of joy and praise and honor before all nations of the earth which shall hear all the good that I do unto them. They shall fear and tremble for all the goodness, 
for all the prosperity that I procure into it. That's telling me that whatever I've done, he's going to change it by his word. In fact, he's going to forgive me. I can ask God that, Lord, if I've gone too far, help me to get out of this situation. Because I've gone too far and I don't know how to get out of it. That's what revival is about, too. I'm going to end with this. Out of all this, I said it earlier, but I'm going to say it again. The most important thing that happens is that his glory comes upon you. Because John 17, and the glory which thou gavest to me, I have given to them, that they may be one, even as we are one. The revival brings us to the great one and to the only one. That means now I can have one mind, one accord in Christ. <coughs> Revival brings out the best and the worst of people. Only by submission and obedience can we further that revival. So I want to ask anybody, everyone, that if you are holding back something, I ask that you can come forward and ask God to forgive you. This is a call of repentance, a call of joy, a call of submission, a call of peace. A call to glory to God. A call of restoration. That we all need every day. Because restoration is a part of growth. I may have a chipped tooth. My arm can't stretch out. That's as far as it goes. From this one. I got into an accident. But that doesn't stop me from serving God. It doesn't stop him from serving God. Old age doesn't stop her from serving God. Wheelchairs have nothing to do with God because in his kingdom I will stand. If we have something in us that we need to be cleansed, come for it. Don't be ashamed. Remember, if you deny me before my father, I'm deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. I'm coming for it, acknowledging that I love God before men. That's what Christ looks at. Coming for it, acknowledging that I want a change in my life. Coming forward is telling the church and the body of Christ, I need help. And there are those in here who will help you. I can promise you that. That's our job as a Christian, to help those in need. I gave uh, a couple weeks ago, I gave my brother my phone number, an email, and told him, if you need any help, call me. I don't care if I'm in Texas. I'll talk to you. Don't be ashamed. I'd rather you talk to me than your brother's out there drinking a beer, smoking a cigarette, or doing drugs. We're here to help. That's the revival. Don't be afraid to come forward. I implore you. Signifying your love for Christ. Showing him how much. And I want to thank you. Thank you for, for having the joy of Christ in you. Because now that joy is passed on from us to you. Christ now wants to come in you. He knocks at the door. And you're stepping forward and says, Lord, I will answer the door. And I want you to come in, Lord. Amen. I want you to come into my life, Lord, and change my ways. Because only there I can be happy by your ways, Father God. And I thank those that are here every day. Because the change is in me. God never changes. He changes us by his word. I thank the Lord 
because each day as we grow in Christ, we can have victory over the enemy. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Because right now as I come forward, I receive that. Victory is assured that I can promise you. Stay in the word of God. Be steadfast on his word. Don't trip, stumble, and fall. If you think you're going to do that, then call someone. Don't be afraid. I see more phones in church with Bibles. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for this time that he's given me. Pastor Ed, I want to thank you for me being up here, sharing the pulpit with you and Pastor Bonnie. But I also ask, again, please, don't hold back. Release the sin, the iniquities, transgressions, backslidings. Don't take it back with you. Leave it here at the cross of Calvary. Your revival starts right now. Take it with you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your... Thank you, Father God, for those who come forward, Father God. Lord, give them a new heart and a new mind, Father God. They come here, Father God, searching. Lord, you have the answers, Father God, and we thank you for them. Cleanse them, Father God. Forgive them, Lord Jesus. Bring them into your kingdom, Father God. 